We're here at AUSA 2019 and I'm speaking to David Albritton, President, GM Defence. Uh, David, um, GM and Defence, um, GM's presence in the defence sector ha has come and gone over the years mm -hmm. and, and they've recently re-entered the defence sector right. with, with an infantry squad vehicle offering. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about GM Defence's legacy and also perhaps tell us why GM has, has chosen now to re-enter the defense arena. General Motors goes back in defense all the way back to 1917 and World War One. We provided our first GM trucks uh, to that effort and then you know for many many years all the way through World War One, World War Two, through Vietnam you know we've had a legacy of supporting you, you know US military uh, around the world. Um, General Motors Defense did have a company uh, that was in existence up until 2003 that was sold to General Dynamics and and then in 2017, we kind of reincarnated the GM Defense brand and the company uh, to kind of take advantage of a lot of the technological advancements that are going on in automotive uh, around the world today. If you think about autonomous vehicles, if you think about next generation propulsion systems, and just the other types of technologies that are going on in vehicles today, the, the U.S. military and other militaries around the world are investing and want those types of capabilities in their vehicles and other platforms across domains today as well. We think this is a prime time for us to offer those types of capabilities and technologies to those customers and so we believe this is an awesome you know time for us to jump back into the market and we're very excited to do so and, and now with a company the size of, of GM um, green war fighting guns all that sort of thing doesn't tend to sit too comfortably with shareholders uh, or cannot sit that comfortably with shareholders is this something that GM has considered I um, haven't really thought about that. I mean, if you think about the population of people we have in the company, we hire a lot of veterans. There's a lot of veterans that work for, uh, that have served um, and, and work in General Motors. So we're very proud of our legacy and our her heritage uh, in the defense market and very proud to support the warfighters war going forward. So I don't believe it's as big an issue as you're saying, uh, but uh, the company uh, all the way up to the CEO is very proud of our heritage and uh, you know, looking forward to supporting the warfighter around the world. Excellent. And the, the, the product you're showing here at, at, at AUSA this year is an infantry squad vehicle offering. And, and to talk to us about that with Matt Scrace, Program Engineering Manager for the ISV. Matt, the, the infantry squad vehicle, um, could you tell us a little bit about it, what platform it's based on, what you've done to that, and so on and so on? Sure, thank you. What we've done is taken our commercially available production Colorado ZR2 platform, combined it with some off-road racing components that are offered by Chevrolet Performance Parts, as well as designed an all-new body structure and upper roll cage protection system for the, for the customer to specifically meet what they're seeking is a nine-person troop carrier. Uh, and the ZR2, that's a, that's a performance version of the, the Chevrolet Colorado? Correct, it's an up-level, trim-level performance variant vehicle. Uh, and the Colorado, is, is, that a, is that a station wagon or a pickup or, or, or a bit of both? It's a mid-size pickup truck. It's offered in several different cab and body uh, configurations. Uh, what we've based this vehicle off of is our crew cab short uh, wheelbase platform. And, and clearly th there's not very much left of the bodywork of that particular vehicle. So bodywork is all new. But automotives, can you run us through what you've done to the automotives, what you've changed, what you've swapped out, or what you could possibly change or swap out if needed to do so? Sure. So we built the foundation using our production 2.8 liter turbo diesel Duramax engine combined with the six-speed automatic transmission, which are all commercially available production components. We've used the production uh, Colorado frame with some reinforcements uh, to sustain the heavier load of carrying nine occupants. Uh, the full suspension system has been retuned. We use Multimatic dynamic suspension spool valve dampers combined with jounce shocks at all four corners to carry that extra load and provide a very smooth ride when it's fully loaded with all nine passengers. And, and, and looking at the suspension, that, uh, quite interestingly, the rear axle is, is rigid axle and leaf springs, um, which is, is very, very unusual. W um, why did you go with uh, rigid, rigid axle leaf springs? It's a very, very solid foundation for our, our program. We've proven that technology uh, through miles and miles of racing in Baja race series through many years. Uh, it's proven, it works very well. It still achieves the mobility and motivity requirements that the customer is seeking at a very uh, cost-effective solution. 
and, and, and remaining with the suspension setup, uh, is there anything left of the original suspension from the original vehicle, or is it all replaced or retuned? Uh, approximately 70% of the vehicle still uses carry out commercial off-the-shelf components from the production Colorado program. We've only retuned it, changed some spring rates, upgaged some things, added some axle reinforcement structure, but other than that, it is a Colorado ZR2 program. And, and, and if we go back to the power plant, um, the, the current engine in the commercial product will, will be current emissions compliant um, and, and would not particularly like high sulfur fuels, aviation fuels. Uh, I'm guessing you have m modified the engine to run on military grade fuels? That's correct. We've calibrated the engine with a specific calibration to run on JP8 diesel. It will also run on conventional diesel fuel, so it'll run on both. We have bypassed emission systems per our customer requirements. Uh, and that's one of the beauties that we have with General Motors Defense. We reach back into our parent company, General Motors, to leverage our software and calibration skill sets. Have you uprated from that to meet military requirements? The base production 2.8 liter diesel produces 286 horsepower and uh, we have upgraded that with our calibrations to, to achieve a little bit more power. We're not ready to disclose how much we have, but with running on JPA and bypassing some of the emission systems, we do see some power increase. And in terms of weight, um, what's, what's the unladen weight of the platform um, and, and what's the sort of GVW limit that you are looking towards? The target requirement curb weight is less than 5,000 pounds, so it can be lifted by CH-47 or sling lift by a, a black clock. Uh, the GVW is the, essentially driven by the payload of the nine occupants, so uh, 3,200 pounds of payload capacity. And the vehicle as it's shown here, is that just a, a developmental top hamper or is that something that's relatively representative of what you will offer to the customer? The vehicle that you see here was our bid sample submission to the customer. Uh, we also use this as our test and development vehicle, so it's uh, instrumented with some, some test gear, but it is very representative of the vehicle we are on contract to deliver uh, on our prototype contract. And, and how much testing have you done to date with, with the platform? Are there any figures that you can give us? We've done approximately six months of testing this summer at our Milford Proving Grounds location through various test chambers, dyno cells, wind tunnels, as well as uh, road testing. And, and, and beyond the United States, uh, are you looking to offer that particular product globally if opportunity arises? Right now our mission focus is the, the U.S. Army as our customer base, but the vehicle is very flexible. We can look at other, other configurations of the vehicle, other propulsion systems, other body configurations, occupant variations are, are open game. Interestingly, in your answer there, you, you mentioned alternative propulsion systems. Um, recently, GM has, has been very active with, with alternatives such as hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, do you have any intent to offer the US military uh, that sort of option for this or is that something a little bit further down the line? We have several technology work streams that are in play both from battery electric propulsion systems to fuel cell to diesel to gasoline propulsion systems. I would say we are open to entertaining any requests from a customer for, for variations of our, our propulsion system. Um, but, but if I may, more specifically, with, with the current ISV requirement, you'll be sticking with a, a diesel offer? It's a single mission point solution right now. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed.